the not too distant future, next Sunday AD, there was a guy named Joel, not too different from you or me, he worked at Gizmonic Institute, just another face in a red jumpsuit, he did a good job cleaning up the place, but his boss is getting like him, so they shot him in the space. He used those special parts To make his robot friends Robot, robot, cabot Gypsy, Tom Servo Cool If you're wondering how he eats and breathes And other science facts Then repeat to yourself, it's just the show I should breathe and just relax Come on, you two, quit clowning around. Get out here. It's time to do our chores. Never. We are not allowed to fraternize with the human. <laughs> to commercial sign. Oh, hi, everybody. My name is Joe. Welcome to the Satellite of Love. And my two robots, Tom and Crow, are currently hiding out from me in their super secret chocolate fudgy cardboard bat cave. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you guys, uh, this is your creator speaking, and I would like you to come out and start cleaning the load pan bay, if that's not too much to ask. Ah, sorry. Mr. Crow and Mr. Servo are not in right now. I could get you a copy of their manifesto, which clearly states, no, be jumpsuited humans are allowed on the premises. I Thank happen you. to have a manifesto here, Crow, that states, you guys better get your little metal hinders out here, or uh, there's going to be some real trouble. Ooker. <laughs> so be it, Joel. But we'll have you know that we are neo luddites who have abandoned the wicked ways of your filthy technology. Yeah, we even hate ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> anarchy, anarchy, anarchy. You guys, you listen. You better get out of here by commercial sign, or there's just going to be real trouble. That's all I can say. Uh, commercial sign in five, four, three, two. Commercial sign now. We'll be right back. No, 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 no. We can't come out, Joel, because this is a very controlled sensory deprivation experiment, and it'll ruin everything. I'm, uh, oh, I'm like John Travolta in The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. I pick up every little virus that comes along. Yeah, there I got him. Ouch. Magic Those bots are wild. He should really discipline them more. I mean, they're cute and everything now, but once they get older, you won't be able to control them. Hm. Sad, really. Frank? Yes, your kinchiness? Does it hurt much? Well, Gooper, as you discipline your little no-neck monsters, I'll be casually blowing you out of the water once again with this week's invention exchange. Everyone knows that plants love music, but no one has taken advantage of their vast knowledge of it. Frank? Oh, <laughs> yes, that's why we slave bleak horrible hours in our stifling lab, our naughty, gnarled hands doing black, unspeakable things, twisting God's work into our own hellish, slithering, mutatious thing. Until we came up with this, a plant that reviews music. Why don't you start the tape, Frank? I'll start the tape. Beethoven's Waldstein Sonata, number 21, opus 53, is a prime example of a musical genius at the top of his form and maturity. The strong, sonorous chords in the first movement, the swiftly changing modulations, speed fluidly towards an exhilaratingly powerful climax of restated theme. I thought it had no texture. Bugger off. Well, Joel... You know, uh, that one didn't seem very scary for you guys. Anyway, my invention exchange this week is based on the premise that tattoos are far too permanent. I'll set the stage for you. Let's see. Port-a-call. 
Philippine Islands. You meet a really nice girl, and you have a couple of friendly shots, and you split the fire dog platter, but tomorrow morning, when you're on your way to Subic Bay, all you've got is a bellyache and a tattoo that says Mingo. Yeah, but with this new non-permanent tattoo, you just peel up the sheet and start your life over again the right way. You see, the problem is that people get tattoos when they're drunk, and they end up with irrational slogans. With this tattoo, you can erase those and write sensible things like grocery lists or your girlfriend's birthday. What do you think, sirs? Mm -hmm. Does what hurt? Your experiment today, Joel, is probably the only film about a giant mutated guy that doesn't star Ted Cassidy or Richard Keel. It's the amazing Colossal Man. Put the hurt on him, Frank. Live to serve you. American International House of Pancakes. Hey! <laughs> yeah, sweet movie. Scarecrow. Scarecrow. Scare me. The time is 2.45 a.m. Do you know where your children are? 15 minutes before time zero. At time zero, a new type of atomic explosion, a plutonium bomb, will be detonated at Desert Rock, Nevada. So wake the kids. These soldiers are to experience the plutonium explosion under simulated combat conditions. See? Amazing. Creston? Gunstopper? Oh? Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you wish. Oh, good one, Crow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I read it someplace. Get your stinking credits out of my face! And in our junior trombone section, Ken Langan in the first chair with Kathy Downs in the second. And don't forget this year's forensic league, Frank Jenks, Hank Peterson. Russ Bender, he takes a lot of sick dates. Oh. And Bender in the... <laughs> and Bruce Springsteen driving through Nebraska. Hey. I am B-Rock! Ronald Rock. Sinclair, we've enjoyed his fine gas products. Honey, don't t- count the white line. She'll get sick. Please remember, this is a great film. We hope you enjoy it. We won't. Hey, look up there. Neck braces by Joseph von Stroheim. <laughs> Eric. Okay, I think uh, we've given him enough credit. Oh, yeah. Well. Ah, Bert I. Gordon produced and directed. He did everything. He's king of the world. All right, you win. Okay, we're at Grandma's. Get your shoes on. Attention! Ooh. Attention! Okay. All the The time is 0 minus 30 seconds. What time? The time is 0 minus 30 seconds. Oh, I gotta get a watch. The plutonium explosion will take place at time 0. I repeat, the plutonium Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Ten, nine, eight, 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 seven, six, five. Oh, I'm scared. Four, I'm sorry, I stole those three, batteries in the third grade. Two, one, zero. <sighs> oh. Hey, it's amazing colossal dud. <coughs> Hit it. W- wiggle a plug or something. It's beeping. Do not leave your position. I repeat, do not leave your position. Assume the position. The plutonium bomb has been triggered and has exploded at any moment. The chain reaction did not complete its cycle as calculated. Oh. Keep your dark glasses on and stay where you are. The snack bar will be closing in ten minutes. Robert Peterson, pick up your free pizza. I see. Right. Well, she's got to work late again. Uh, How does it look, Colonel? It's dark. I'm not sure. A thing like this happened. They've set off lots of these bombs before. Not a plutonium bomb they haven't. This oh, is the first oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sir, can we leave? Can we get out of here? No, Sergeant. You've got to wait until the chain reaction dampens or reaches a point of explosion. So use your helmet. Could go off in a second, a minute, ten minutes, maybe not at all. Just have to wait it out. For the rest of your life, Sergeant. Can we smoke, sir? I don't care sure. if you burst into flame. Keep hugging that <laughs> trench wall closest to the bomb position. Won't be any warning when it goes. Oh, thank you, sir. Colonel. Huh? Listen. Hmm? Hmm? Sounds like a plane. Hmm. I hope it's one of
one of ours. <laughs> oh no, it's Amelia Earhart. She picked a bad time to come back. I'll see. Hello, Sarah. Uh, get me my oh. pilot. There's a light civilian plane coming in at 190 degrees. It's light and refreshing. No, it's zesty, and I, I think I see cheese on the wings. Trampoline at the ready, sir. Ground to pilot. Ground to pilot. This is control. Can you read me? A bedtime story. <laughs> Still coming in. Ground to pilot. You are flying over an atomic detonation area. Oh. You are flying over a restricted area. Hmm. It's Buddy Hackett and Mickey Rooney too. Change your heading 180 degrees. But never change those little things I love about you. Losing altitude fast. Real fast. He's going down. Bring him in, Joel. Come on, come on. That's good. That's good. Yeah, well, nice. Sir. Nice. Oh, good okay. job. Set it anywhere. <laughs> oh, cool. You can see the body and everything. <sighs> Was he killed? Can't tell. Could, Could be unconscious inside the plane. Nope, nope. I can see his pulse. He's alive, but his head's oh, gone. Go off any second. That's the risk I'll have to take, Lieutenant. Now you get out there. Control, that pilot could be alive. What about the bomb? It's still activated, Colonel. Once the chain reaction has been triggered, there's nothing we can do to stop it. But there's a man in that plane. A man who cares! No, oh, boy. One weekend a month. <laughs> stop, wait, come back. Kind of runs like a girl. <laughs> Glenn, this is your father O'Malley. Come back, boy. It's not worth it. Glenn, this is your first grade teacher. Don't do it. Glenn, this is your mother. If you stop, I'll make your favorite dish. Hey, FM stereo. It's sitting really... Huh. Wait a minute. What the hell am I doing out here? Ah! Well... Live and learn. Yeah, you know what they say about Nevada. Don't like the weather, just wait a couple minutes. And from that day on, they call them patches. <laughs> hey, I can see the president's face. Coolidge. Uh -huh. Next, on a very special Trapper John M.D. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve on a raft and wreck them. Mm, extra sweet. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, never drink while you're under the sun lamp. Mm -mm. I think we'll make them into a pinata. Oh. Hey, that's pasta. <laughs> He's the amazing colossal lasagna now. Ooh. And then it says removed wrenched ankle. Ha, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll just stuff this back in anywhere. No one will know. Here, here's some more. Nice use of watercress, Doctor. Nice presentation. Another unit of blood, please. Anyone else want anything? Oh, I hope my roommate didn't drink it again. Yeah. A unit of blood, please. Any kind, I don't care. Taps, okay. Thank you. Nurse. How did you know? How is he? He's not. He's not anything. Where have they got Colonel Manning that was in an accident? They got him over the surgery, didn't you? Well, figures I thought as much. Hey. You brought him out yet? They don't hold much hope for him. It's quite a mess when they got to him. Yeah, a real pile of goo. You know him? Couldn't even find the plane or the pilot he was trying to save. Mm. Oh, wait, there's some more. I'm not finished yet. I was just going on to say that maybe... You know, I was there, covering the test for National News Service. I didn't run up next to the bomb. Never seen anything like it. I've seen plenty. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Please. You a friend of his? It's Beyonce. Oh. oh. Oops. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What a fool. But he really was Please, a mess. Can I do something for you? Get you something? Get you drunk, maybe? Get you some beef stroganoff? Oh. oh, I did it. I'm sorry. How long have you known Colonel Manning? What are you doing after he's dead? Yeah. Oh, how long could a three-minute egg take? Maybe if you talked about him, it'd help. Yeah, it'll help talking about old pizza face. Oh, oh you bet you were there when it happened. Was he conscious when they reached him? I mean, <laughs> was there much pain? Well, no, I felt great. What? Oh. got to the hospital. 
I don't think he knew anything when that blast hit him. It's terrible. You know, they have the whole thing on film. Huh. There were 18 cameras embedded in concrete to shoot every phase of the explosion. Ooh. Third degree burns on almost 100% of the body's surface. Bring it on. Still See, lives. Looks kind of like Bluto when I do that. <laughs> See that? <laughs> all the rules, he should be dead. Ah, the army and its rules. We were to be married tonight in Las Vegas. Well, that went in the toilet, toots. We met in the funniest way. Playing chicken with trains. Our cars locked bumpers at a busy intersection in Chicago. His burst into flames. He was stationed nearby at Fort Sheridan. He got so mad. He still ribs me about my drive. Ribs? That's what I'm hungry oh, for. Yeah. Oh. Colin is such a wonderful man. Ooh. Get her a Kleenex. Doesn't deserve a break like this. Why did this have to happen to him? Because he's rock stupid, honey. Things like this just happen. It doesn't have to be a reason. Oh, he's a Calvinist. Mm. He must have protected his eyes with his arm. He apparently covered them when the blast hit. That's mm. one bit of Stove top stuffing. Look. Mm. This man's luck ran out long ago. When he got me as a doctor, I have no idea what I'm doing. You'll die of shock before morning, and if that doesn't do it, infection will. And if that doesn't do it, I will. I'll be sure he gets penicillin and cortisone around the clock. And keep stuffing him with cilantro. Although I think it's useless. There's always a chance. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. That's you give to a man who hasn't a square inch of skin left on his body. He's already lost enough body fluid to be fatal. And what the heck are we doing here? Let's go have a sandwich. I got things to do for yeah. crying out loud. It's hmm? Jerry Paris. Well, we've done all we can do. Now we'll just have to wait. <sighs> yeah, poor bum's screams were muffled by a throat full of his own blood. Ooh. Oh, the lunch buffet. Hi, oh, honey. I'm your friend. Don't worry about me. I'll see you later. I gotta go to bed now. Why is he ignoring me? Vroom, vroom. Hey, hang a Roscoe here. Uh, well, what I usually do is roll him in the elevator and pick a floor. <laughs> now keep the room temperature uh, at 80 well, degrees. Not for him. I'm on a constant check Wait a minute. Here's someone I can right. fall in love with. Now, will he be all right, Doctor? <laughs> yeah, Thank right. Carol. Your name was the only word he spoke. Well, that and... Ah! He's still alive. He will be all right. Well, keep the receipts I for your know. shower gifts. I wish I could give you some hope. I prescribe me, Dr. Chad Feelgood. Ciao. Next on Insensitive Hospital. Oh, terrific. My fiance's a deli stacker. What, are they giving his head a shower? Yep. Keeping it fresh. You know, if they would only take a little money and fix that roof, they wouldn't have to do that. Well, now, would you like some shade? Oh, what's the point? Hmm, court low. sunshine and how is our little Johnsonville brat doing oh you're thirsty aren't you well something's much bigger than we expected Yes, Doctor, and plasma continuously. Scissors, please. You know, saran wrap has so many useful uses. Mm -hmm. Make a tent. Hey, he's done. And he smells great. Mm. Oh, get the barbecue sauce. What in the heck is the deal with this seaweed? Oh, I put it there. That's yours. I was clowning. Uh, dark meat, please. Hey, get me a fork. I want to see if, how he's doing. Still 
develop new skin. How's it possible? Uh, maybe we got the wrong room, huh? Yes, this was dead tissue. Ugh. Today, there isn't even a scar. Neat. What do you make of it, Paul? When the skin is burned to the degree that it was on this man's body... It's really icky. Mm. It just doesn't grow back. <laughs> so what's the answer? Vandals came in and put skin on him. That's yep. it. I don't know. Hey. You guys really are doctors. The skin. What about it? Oh. It's not burned. Well, he's going to be all right, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, right, Dorothy. And you can go back to Kansas now. Dork. It was my idea to use the seaweed. You played a major role in the development of the plutonium bomb, Mr. Kingman. I'm going to show you cartoons. We hope that you may be able to help us to understand or to learn how Colonel Glenn Manning survived the blast. I brought you the film taken during the explosion, but I don't see what can be learned from it, Ooh. as far as your what? patient is concerned. The accident was unfortunate, very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. What more can be said? Can't you just let it lie? There are two answers that we're looking for. Now, the first is... How Glenn Manning was able to survive the explosion. Chance. Uh -huh. It just happened that conditions were such that he was afforded a certain amount of protection. Hey. What explanation would you give for the new skin that was grown on They're his skin in a matter of hours? What possible connection could there be to the bomb? A man survives an explosion, a plutonium explosion. Mm -hmm. And then for some reason or other, his skin heals more rapidly than usual. What is the mystery, gentlemen? Can I go? Just let me go! When 60 or 70 percent of a person's body is burned, it's icky. he doesn't have much chance for survival. Now, if he should live, the skin that was destroyed does not grow back. It remains dead scar tissue. True or false? When a man suffers over a 95 percent body burn and less than a day later looks normal, I'd say that was a mystery. <laughs> and you feel that plutonium may have some unknown quality that is responsible? It's worth every effort to know. Yep. Now, I'll admit that you may be right. The plutonium possibly had nothing to do with it. I'm losing, There may be nothing I? more to this than a freak of nature. But if there is something to it, mm -hmm. think of what it'll mean to medical science to have such a regenerative or healing power under its control. Are you finished? Can I go? Shall we do the film? Yeah. Turn it on. Come on. Lights! Can we have some lights? That's... Come on! It's better. Like many of the atom tests, we built a model town to see how it reacted to the explosion. So there. The protected cameras, such as this one, recorded the experiment. Watch this building when the heat of the explosion reaches it. Well, there was a family of 12 in here. Oh, Should have told them to leave. Now the force of the blast. This is your house, and you're in it, and I'm out here laughing. Here's another building. This is your mother's house. First burned. Then disintegrated. Right. Whoa. There's Manning. Sourpuss. First burned. Then disintegrated. This was seconds before the explosion. Yeah, look at that jerk. Thinks he's a big man. Well, watch this big hero. Sure. All right, I proved my point. Turn it off. Turn it off. Come on, lights. Prano. That was beautiful. Let's preview it at Oxnard. The fact that Glenn Manning lived after the blast. And the new skin completely replaced the burned dead oh, tissue in a matter of hours leaves only one conclusion. He's got something out there is beyond the limits of our knowledge. Oh, Joel's getting ready to teach us one of those important lessons that's to be learned from today's, today's experiment. Hi, guys. Just, uh, uh, Oh, oh hi. Uh, that yeah. jigs up. Hey, hi. Sam, hi, Joe. What What's the matter, you guys? You act like you don't want to hang out with me. I got a really great activity no. planned for you oh, today. Cool, great. You know, we yeah. kind of doubted that you did there. I understand. Mm. It sometimes happens. But you're really going to love this. I found a way to derive a really important lesson from today's film oh, and the experiment. No. So right. check it out. Camba, let's roll this footage. you remember this sequence? Uh -huh. Brought him out yet? Huh. They don't hold much hope for him. It's quite a mess when they got to him. Couldn't even find the plane or the pilot he was trying to save. Yeah. Huh, neat. So? Well, 
Huh? You see, we can see clearly that this is no way to act around the spouse of a horribly disfigured nuclear accident victim. Oh, right. Now, when okay. we get back to Earth, I don't want you guys making the same mistake. No. So, what are some nice things we could say to this man's spouse to make her feel better? Uh, oh, I'd say uh, something caring and sensitive, like, uh, I understand his face looks like a hot dish at a Lutheran potluck dinner. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's, like that's, that. no that's not what no? I'm talking about, uh, okay, Tom. Well, go well, ahead. I'd comfort her by saying, Dear, you know, the scuttlebutt around the hospital is that now he's called the Amazing Jelly Man. <laughs> no, <laughs> come on, this is a hospital, you guys. Oh, of course. Right, 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 right. Uh, then I'd say something medical, like uh, seeing him up close and in person gives me a better understanding of how the muscle groups work. Come on, bro. Come on. This? He'll sure come off the bone easy oh, now. Oh, great. Oh, oh, like that's ribs, it. Okay, know? okay, okay. Mm, I'm sorry right. I brought it up. I thought maybe you guys could have an aptitude for this kind of thing, learning oh, human on. sensitivity, mean, and I'm no, sorry. No, I better Look, just look, take look, look, Joel, 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 we're very sensitive to your yeah. feelings, and you're in a bad spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, think of it. You're stranded in space. You'll never see your family again, and yeah. when the orbit on the satellite decays, you'll be burnt to a crisp. But yeah. you never hear us talking about that when you're around. Well, that's right. We're sensitive to the reality oh, of your situation sensitive. here. Yes. Now, for instance, we know your hair only looks like that because there's no barber on the ship, right? Yeah, yeah. and even though your feet smell like cheese, we prefer to think they smell like good cheese. That's right, and we know that if you had breath mints, you'd use them. Yeah, it's not yeah. like you choose. I'll leave a pheromone trail around when you walk and... So you see, Joel, buddy, we are sensitive. Very Aren't sensitive. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. You're very sensitive. Oh, so are you. You're oh. equally sensitive to me. You cried I earlier. What was that about? Well, thanks a lot. You guys made me feel a lot better. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, Domino's calling there. Get up. Pizza's ready. Hmm. It's me, the reporter. I just wanted to finish the story about my uncle's death at the meat plant. Mm. Okay, well, you see, my uncle works in Milwaukee, and... Shh. I heard you were available. Yes? I'm Lieutenant Klein, attached to security at the Nevada testing ground. May I talk with you for a moment? Well, if you're attached to security, how can you get through the door? <laughs> Colonel Manning something happened? No, at least not that I know of. Not yet. Oh, security officer attached to Colonel Manning. I thought you were attached to security. But you won't be able to visit the colonel at the hospital for a while. Hmm? But why? Security reasons, ma'am. I wish I could tell you more, but well, I really don't know anymore. I don't understand. What possible reason could there be to keep me from seeing him? Well, I was with the colonel at the time of the accident, ma'am. Good voice. I wish I could help you. I'm only carrying out orders. Oh. But he is getting well. I'm sorry, you'll have to wait until security is lifted. No, how about that drink? All right. Thank you, Lieutenant. Good night, ma'am. Good night. Wow, a restraining order on little old me. Oh, I've got to face it. He fell for a nurse. Oh. Meanwhile... Let's see. Original or extra crispy? Ah, this is the way to see, Glenn. Wow, this is high security, isn't it? Mm. Paging Dr. Fine, Dr. Howard, Dr. Fine. Oh. Glenn's a pillow. Well, at least I can still snuggle him and turn him over to the cool side. Well, huh? so? Go on. Excuse me. Uh, could you tell me where they've taken Colonel Manning? No, nope. sorry, miss. I never heard of Colonel Manning. But you must have heard something about him. Sorry, miss, but I'm Nat King Cole. Let me see. I was a student at a small Midwestern college. Excuse me. My name is Carol Forrest. I'm Colonel Glenn Manning's fiance. Yes. Ooh, bummer. I was looking for Colonel Manning. There's no visiting until 2 p.m. in the afternoon, Miss Forrest. I know that. And I also know that Colonel Manning is no longer in his room on the second floor. Where have they taken him? Hmm, let's see. Pound cake, uh, chocolate mousse, a biscuit. It, uh, hmm, There's no. no Colonel Manning listed here. Says so right on the There's card. There's house still near Barstow. Perhaps you've made a mistake. I haven't made a mistake. I know Colonel Manning was here, and I insist on being told what you've done with Ooh. him. Ooh, I hope they start I wrestling. To the oh, yeah. Office, <laughs> He'll be back the day after tomorrow, so if you'd care to return. Now uh, you can kiss my Aunt Fanny. Where can I find Dr. Lindstrom? Oh, would you stop? Don't tell me you've never heard of him. I've never heard of him. It says so right here. Oh, you mean Dr. Lindstrom from Rochester. Pitch. That's right. Well, he was only here for a few days. Called in on a special case. Did he return to Rochester? 
we wouldn't have that information. Lies! Lies! lies. Yes, sir. Come in, please. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Well, I hope you never find him. Tart. Hmm. She's wearing chain mail. What's that? The pocket guide to plutonium consultants? Mm. Hmm. Who's this? Susie thinks she doesn't need a seatbelt. Watch Susie go ballistic through the windshield. Oh, this is Hazelton in the early days. Oh. Weighing three tons, this zippy car is perfect for the determined fiancé on the go. Uh, yeah, once you order up a gross of helmets, I'll take care of her. Hey, you toots. I'm afraid you can't go any farther, miss. This is government property. Is this the road to the hospital? Yes, ma'am. I've come to see Colonel Glenn Manning. I believe he's a patient here. Oh, there are no patients here, ma'am. Not since the war ended. <coughs> Please, I've come a long way to see you. Besides, I pay your salary. Just a minute. I'll phone the sergeant. Better. Uh, did you order any wallet size, ma'am? Got, Got it! it! Go! Uh, chicken. Huh. Oh, they put a phone in his biffy? Sergeant will see you. Now you stay on this road about a quarter of a mile and you can't miss it. You'll find the sergeant just inside the main entrance. Oh, thank you. Thank you very little. Hey, wait, the scientist turned back. This means you. Sanadu, palatial home of Charles Foster Kane. Cost, no one can say. Rosebud. Mm, this is nice. The floor was just waxed. Be careful. <laughs> hey, I, I, I think that window would make an excellent puppet uh, area. Oh, yeah. Puppet mm -hmm. stage. Mm -hmm. She kind of looks like Fran Allison, actually. Mm. Dr. Lindstrom, Dr. Lindstrom, report to laboratory. That's me. Can I help you, miss? <laughs> I'm looking for an army officer. Hey, who isn't? He was transferred here. Oh, what's his name, ma'am? Colonel Glenn Manning. Hmm. Colonel Manning. Oh, you mean old uh, peel and eat no Manning. Colonel Manning here, ma'am. Oh, I see. Thank you, Sergeant. I was told that he might be here. Obviously, the party was mistaken. Sorry, I couldn't help you, miss. Uh, the guard will let you out the gate. Thank you. Some party. What, the government's involved in a cover-up? How could that be? Well, I'm leaving then. I'm off. There's the door slamming. <coughs> oh, the door's closing now. I'm outside now. I'm in my car. I'm getting in my car. I'm leaving. It worked. <laughs> oh, this is probably before they knew the effect of lighting on worker happiness. I'm mm -hmm. guessing. Mm -hmm. Hospital noir. Mm -hmm. I think she's loud enough. Oh, just walking by, not seeing anything. Mm -hmm. That was close. Too close. Yeah, I had some trouble getting the hamburger down the tube, though. I can understand. See you, lady. A really big one. Breathing much more rapidly now. Changes every hour. Boy, it's dark. Need a light? Ever get sick of doing these expositions, talking when the camera's not on you? I do. I keep the room temperature at 80 degrees. I want a constant check on these calls hour by hour. Right. And I keep dabbing them with butter and rubbing them with garlic clove every half hour. See you, lady. You can head on in there if you want. Are you decent? She's got nothing but a teddy on under that coat, you know. I wish. A little surprise. <laughs> oh, my fiance's a sumo wrestler! Oh. Rosebud! That'll happen. Hmm. 
There were many reasons why we didn't let you in on Colonel Manning's condition this far. In the twilight zone. Primary being that Washington gave the strictest orders that he be isolated. Mm-hmm. Now, There's for obvious reasons, they ordered a security restriction over the whole affair. I want to help. Is there something I can do? <laughs> We're doing everything that can be done this far. What happened? What made him grow? Wonder when Manning is growing from 8 to 10 works. feet a day. The moment, he's 18 feet tall. Tomorrow, he'll be 26 feet. The next day, 35, maybe 40. Okay, okay, look, we get the point already. Of course, we're trying. Believe me, we're trying. Let me explain it to you. Now, you probably already know the body is like a factory. But there's a lot of underpaid it's workers in it? Using new cells to replace the older cells, damaged cells or destroyed cells. Uh -huh. now, this happens in all the different parts of the body. Yeah. Bone cells grow new bone cells. Skin cells grow new skin cells and so on. Throughout the body. Now here, let me show you. This is an example of bone growth. Looks like an x-ray. Oh, oh whoops, now, sorry. Growth Wrong bone, bone growth. Don't I'll carry that up. And the heel bone shown in this x-ray. By means of bone cell growth. Hmm. Now notice that the new cells join the broken bone together so that you no longer see any breaks. Now, a cut, see in your hand, heals in the same way. With He's losing me, but I don't dare damage. say anything. It is this delicately balanced mm -mm. process of new Ooh, nice cells tag off there. dying Smooth. cells or damaged cells is causing the growth problem with Glenn. But how can this make his whole body grow? Gee, it's the me. process is out of balance. For some unknown reason, new cells are growing at an accelerated or speeded up rate, while at the same time, the old cells are refusing to die. This is what makes Glenn grow. Grow, That's Glenn, grow. Skin. Glenn glow? Then if you can stop this from happening... We can stop his growth. It's just like Clifford the Big Red Dog. And if you can't... Then Glenn Manning will continue to grow until he dies. <laughs> oh, I'll never keep him in tennis shoes. Or jock straps. <laughs> Ooh. Goodness, I'm growing so fast, I'm giving myself a wedgie. Oh. Well, look on the bright side, Glenn. At least you got a room with a phone. <laughs> huh? S enters Korean Y. Hmm. Huh? I didn't hear about that. Man, grills just scare the heck out of me. I don't know why. Hmm. There was no reason for you to volunteer. You should have waited until you were called. Honey, I'm in the reserves. They could have called me eventually, anyway. But it just isn't fair. You were just getting started. Oh. You've got your future to think about. I am thinking about it. Thinking about yours, too. <laughs> Darling, yeah. we're going to get married just as soon as the thing's over. They He's can't painting that hot dog. It scares me. Honey. Will you please stop worrying? When you're safe at home, then I'll stop me. worrying. Say, a hot dog makes her lose control. Oh, wow. And, and, and then there were other things, two things that had to do with uh, Korea. Yeah. Hey, what, are we watching the Arts and Entertainment Network? The All Hitler Channel, you mean? <laughs> I'm Mike Wallace, and this is Biography. Stock footage is hell. Hello, baby! Oh, that's mean. Boy. Ah, this war sucks, Sarge. I guess they... I guess they've stopped. Yeah. He's playing the Trini Lopez part you there. Right, yeah, sure. Hey, you save the coupons, Dogface? Sure, how do you think I got this neat war? Right. That last one was close. How the rest? Oh, not so good. Look out, look out! You die, Joe! No, no! Uh, message for you, sir! Uh, Hurts, don't it? Tell your friends. Ooh, Hershey's. Rotten. Smile on your face all the time. They want to take your place, the backstabbers. Stabbers? Thank you. Well, I see he made his uh, quietus with Bear Bodkin. Whatever that means. And, and other things, too. Horrible things. Things with necks and bands. 
John Philip Sousa's life is flashing before his eyes. Weird. They're coming home. It's one of them wars. Honey, this is the longest picnic I've ever been on. Seen it. Taped it. Oh no. Again? I gotta do this? No! Etc. 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 The horror. The horror. Wait a minute. Huh? I feel like chopping a cow in half. Oh, French provincial. Oh my god, I'm being held in Barbie's Malibu dream house. <laughs> Wait until he sees the toilet. Ooh, oh. You know, you have an all night bender and your college buddies play tricks on you. Mm. Hi, this is Mickey Rooney. Billy Barney's on the line, too. Hello, operator. Short distance. Mm <laughs> hmm. Maybe you know. Oh my goodness, I'm a huge Daddy Warbucks! Ooh, he's not taking it well, is he? Mm -mm. How soon will the tent arrive? It's being flown in from Circus Winter Quarters in Florida. And the caterers? Well, he's already outgrown his room, you know. Well, as soon Pretty as you boy. get the tent up, we'll break out the wall and move him. Right. Dr. Lindstrom? Time to get your dress refitted. The reason I sent for you was that Manning regained consciousness during the night. Now, at the moment, he's suffering from the shock of learning about his condition. Mm. He won't talk to anyone. Oh, please, may I see him? I know he'll talk to see me. See him? You can't miss him. him. <laughs> you know, psychologically, you may do him a lot of good. But don't climb on him. Move quietly and unemotionally. You know, at his size, he's capable of pulling these walls apart. Ooh. His height was over 22 feet this morning. I understand. Yeah, remember, to him, you look like a breadstick. Oh, big, oh, huge, big, big, oh, big, oh. Uh, you look like Mr. Clean, Glenn. The Procter & Gamble people are on the phone. Glenn? Hey, I'm huge. I'm not deaf. Won't you talk to me? He's tired. I'm huge. Don't smoke. I'm huge now. They'll be able to help you. I know they will. Honey, I'm still looking forward to our wedding night. The doctors are working night and day to find a cure for you, and they're very hopeful. Call Genghis. Tell him to let out my tux. Why, they're flying in Dr. Mayer from Sweden. Hmm? Sweden? He's one of the greatest specialists of cellular research in medicine. What else can I say to help you, Glenn? What sin could a man commit in a single lifetime to bring this upon himself? Beats me. Oh, my leg! I broke it! Oh, my shoulder! Ooh! Hey, look at the bright side. You can put the star on the top of the tree. Oh. Morning on Glen Oder's breakfast. Huge brown and served sausages are shipped in. Hundreds of skillet scrambles are repaired with pancakes on the side and twin berry syrup by the truckloads. Meat delivery. Meat delivery. Did someone say meat? <laughs> hey, bud. Don't call me bud. What's with this meat order they called in? I thought the army hauled in its own stuff. Come on, move on. Oh, oh man, man he did it. Stock room behind the kitchen. You'll find it at the far side of the main building. Twenty-five sides of beef. Who's going to eat it all? Mm. They haven't had any patients out here since the war ended. You fellas must eat pretty well. We'll invite you to dinner so you can help us. Now move this truck out of here. Oh. And take off that pledge pin. What's it for? It's a Something science fair, dope. It's mighty funny. We're going to have a circus every Saturday. Oh, now, come on. Jeff. You're the geek. You're not a big secret. <laughs> I won't breathe it too, so... All right. If I tell you, will you move this truck? Right. Right. It's Sorry? for him. For who? The giant. What giant? The 30-foot one we got living here. Here you have. 
Want, 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 want. Truth is stranger than fiction. Yeah, I get your 30 foot man right here, buddy. Yeah. Here you go. What kind of sin could a man commit in a single lifetime to bring this upon himself? Ah! Ah! No! Joel? Joel? Uh, won't you talk to us? No! Go away! Ah! I'm huge! Ah! We, we'd like to ask you a few questions. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Yeah. What do you mean, how do I feel? I feel huge! I'm a 50-foot man! Oh! Oh, no. Uh, do you think you're having delusions of grandeur? Oh, he's a colossal man. Of course he's having delusions. Oh, ask uh, him another question. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 who's your favorite monkey? What? Oh, here, let me. Oh, um, sorry. How many fish can you name? Yeah, that's a good one. How many fish can I name? What kind of questions are these? I'm a 50-foot tall man. You don't care about me. Go away. Oh, that's oh, not true, Joel. Ooh, no. We're trying to do everything in our power to help you. Yeah. No, this isn't working. I don't think anything can save him. Nah, he's just... Being difficult because he's a freak. Yeah, let's try plan oh. B, okay? Oh, yeah, plan B, okay. Uh, Joel, are you still there? Of course I'm still here. I'm immense. I'm huge. Oh, uh, oh uh, We have someone here who can help you. Go ahead. Um, honey, um, I'm, I'm really still love you, and I'm not going to leave you in this position. Huh, <laughs> condition. Ha, <laughs> ha, Oh, someone's at the door. Uh, hello. Um, hi there, uh, honey. Um, how would you like to go out with a normal man tonight? <laughs> All right, come on. That's it. This is getting too weird, you guys. Forget hey, it. Servo, how'd you get your arm to work? Oh, that's oh. it. Every time I try to teach you guys a little something about human nature, you got to twist it around into a, one of your little jokes. Well, listen, you guys can just turn around and sashay those little mo robot metal butts of yours into the theater where you can learn a real something about isolation and loneliness. We're sorry. Freak. Yeah. Holy ah! Oh, that really hurt oh, Joel. That wall oh, came down. And now to swing away from the steamy side of the news. Many people are asking what happened to Colonel Glenn Manning, the Army officer who was exposed to the rays of the plutonium bomb at Desert Rock, Nevada, a few days ago. Hmm. Eyewitnesses of the incident state that to all accounts he should have died. How? In the blast. Oh. Is he alive or dead? Or Memorex. What's all the mystery for, Washington? Here in Las Vegas. <laughs> Well, mm -hmm. time to die. Avon calling. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll just call you little Mary Kay. <laughs> well, Fluffy, time to shave your butt and put cosmetics all over it. Oh. Man, those things really made. What's Look at that? that. I'm impressed. What's up, Doc? Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, how's the glass art bar coming there? Let's try it. What the hell? I've got a wild hair. Daddy's got to shoot up first. <laughs> Why don't you put on Sid and Nancy for me? <laughs> oh, no, not there! Please! Oh! Have a nice trip, Fluffy. Oh, the Now, let's turn on the TV and see if we get better reception. Oh, I can see streaking. Oh. Not cell block B! It's the toughest cell! Hey, pass it down. Oh. Night of the Leapus! Tonight! Would you mind if I tried something on my own? What is it? Oh, some crystal meth in a leather clown suit. <laughs> I don't know. Fine. I've made it into a song, and I'd like to sing it at your wedding. By the way, where's Manning? I thought you knew. Carol. You know, he shouldn't be permitted to walk around. He should be confined. Fine. What he weighed this morning? 2,987 pounds. Soaking wet. It looks like the job is ready. Okay, who's Let's next? See. Five hours. Which should make him over 30 feet tall. And a real fashion plate at that. You know, it's funny, Carol. Who do you think drove? I was sitting here like this on the hillside, away from people and things. Big and all. Hey, right. pull my finger. He reminds me of that picnic that we took once. 
You know, time has lost all perspective. So is this movie. It's been a lifetime since that explosion. Everything that happened before seems another world. What? That was a wonderful time. Huh? What'd you say, Carol? Before I became a monster? No, I was going to say freak. You mind a bit. You shouldn't. I shouldn't what? Talk about it, think about it. Do you realize that every breath I take, every movement... I'll be watching you. Everything reminds me of what happened. Aww. Even when I try to sleep at night, close my eyes, so I won't see people in the world getting smaller every minute. What a drag. The beating of my heart keeps getting louder and louder, reminding me... That I should cut down on my salt intake. I should never have lived through that blast. You're alive, Glenn, and as long as you are, there's always hope. You know what they wrote about me in the college yearbook? Dickweed. No, no. A man most likely to reach the top. Oh. <laughs> hey, don't laugh, Glenn. We're on a fault line. I know it is. The doctors are working night and day to find a cure. They feel that if they can stop your growth, they may be able to bring you back to normal. Well, define normal. You don't really believe that. I don't. They'll never find a cure for me. Well, I was just trying to make conversation. Gee. Dr. Nope, nope. Right. Cutoffs are just a little tight. <sighs> the thighs are bulging out. I'm all right. I just don't want to grow anymore. I'm a Toys R Us kid. I don't want to grow anymore. I'm a Toys R Us kid. <laughs> Big baby. Looks like it. Oh, that's the problem. He was sitting on a bush. Ooh. I don't believe he doesn't want to ride home. Have you seen Glenn? It's not going so well, is it? <laughs> Doesn't he have any relatives? Somebody he could move no, in with. He's all alone except for me. Carol, do you mind if I spoke bluntly? Why stop now? It's no good for you to be here. Well, who has more right? Well, in this case, I feel the right can be wrong. And wrong is right and vice versa. At first, I thought it might do him good to have you near. And, of course, the government insisted that you stay. Mm -hmm. However, I'm going to recommend the security be lifted in your case. Hmm. How can you ask me to turn my back on the only person who's ever meant anything to me? It's easy. Why, I've got to be here to try to help him get well. Suppose that he doesn't get well. Well, I hadn't thought of that. I guess I'd abandon him. Drive back to the laboratory. I have something I want to show you. Funny. Glenn tried that line once. Oh, I hate camping. Why do they keep putting these little chairs in here? They just do it to bug me. Hmm. Huh. What's this? What, he's, he's going to read a book now? Yeah, he is. Hmm, little women. Oh, come on. That's cruel. I brought your dinner, sir. Huh? Oh, great. Five gallons of hospital jello. Oh. Um. Um. I, I, I'm can't turn down service, sir. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I don't know what it is, but these hospital portions are always too damn small. Why do you expect a tip? <laughs> oh, you're not going to wipe your mouth on me again, are you? Please. Hey, how'd the Giants do? <laughs> That's a little joke. Right. Sergeant. How about you, sir? Let's have it. Picked it up at Tom Thumb. Just kidding. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Wrong thing to say. Oh, Lockhorns. Well, she burned the dinner again. He came home late. <laughs> Man lives through plutonium blast. 
I must have missed the setup, sir. They call this living. Ooh. Ooh, not the phlegm again, sir. Not the phlegm. No, project a lot. Look out. Ooh. Oh, that's your chamber pot, sir. <laughs> oh, no more. It's so funny. <laughs> oh. Ah, the healing power of laughter. He must have read Anatomy of an Illness by Norman Cousins, you see. The laughter. All right, Sergeant. Why don't you ask me what it feels like to be a freak? Well, what's it feel like to be a freak? Uh, yes. This is how it feels to be so big you can stick your fist through a second. Yeah, like a da, 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 da. Who else but a clown would have an expandable sarong like this? Oh, know? Shelly Winters. It's adjustable. I can grow to be a hundred feet tall, and I don't need a change of wardrobe. Army ingenuity. Sir, may I leave? Why? <laughs> you want to go back to your quarters and tell your friends about the monster? About the circus freak? As a matter of oh, fact, yes. I'm a circus freak. Have a tent. We'll travel. <laughs> Why don't you make me up a sign saying, see the amazing colossal man. Or see the giant roll-on deodorant. That was it, wasn't it, Sergeant? You do think I'm a freak, don't you? Yeah, you're a super freak, sir. The kind you, you don't take home to mother. With me, it's different. I think you're the freak. I think you're the one that's different. Check off. I'm not growing. <laughs> you're shrinking. <gasps> <laughs> Not only am I bigger, I'm funnier! My jokes are better! <laughs> oh, hey Glenn, time to let out the sarong. Oh, the pain, the pain, the pain. Good. And I feel that if you understand the circumstances more thoroughly, you will realize why it will be better for you to leave. Oh, nice guy. Now this is a step-by-step -step illustration of Glenn's circulatory system. All four veins. To his growth. Mm -hmm. Now this illustration represents Glenn shortly after the accident. He was only mm -hmm. two feet tall. This one is of Glenn as of a few hours ago. Mm -hmm. Now if you look closely at each one, you will notice that all the parts are enlarging at the same ratio, mm -hmm. except for the heart. Now we've never met before, Here. have we? When it was of normal size, the heart measured approximately the size of the distance from his nose to his chin. However, at the size he is now, the heart measures the same as the distance from his lips to his chin. I don't get it. In other words, the heart has increased one half as much as the other parts of the body. Hmm? Now remember when I explained the other day why Glenn was growing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you put me I in a coma. All the parts of the body consisted of millions of tiny cells that were rapidly and uncontrollably multiplying. Like rabbits. Well, today we've learned that this theory does not apply to Glenn's heart. Hmm. It is growing, but at a much slower rate. Oh. Now, the reason for this is rather technical, Carol, but to give you a simplified layman's explanation. He's really big. It might be explained that since the heart is made up of a single cell, what? for all practical purposes, instead of millions a of cells like the rest of the organs what? of the body, it's reacting in an entirely different manner to this unknown stimulus or force that's behind this whole thing. You're not a real doctor, are you? Mm -hmm. So, uh, what's with all the dead rabbits, doctor? No wonder he's always complaining about those sharp pains in his chest. Single what does cell it mean? Heart. He's toast. Simply this, Carol. And unless we can find a way to stop Glenn's growth very soon, his heart won't be able to carry the load any longer. And he'll die. Of a broken heart. <laughs> Matter of days. So, uh, dinner? How will it happen? Details. His mind will go first. Neat. Uh, and then his heart will literally explode. So, uh, don't wear a white dress that day. Why is this horrible thing happening? Because Glenn's a sinner, dear. I've searched everywhere for the answer, and sure. I can't find it. The answer's in your shoes. I have no idea why. I, I lie awake thinking, why? 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 Why does it have to happen? Which question do you want me to answer first? Well, you're a doctor. Tell me. Do no, 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 dear. I'm only a vet. I wish I knew. 
Now, how's that feel, Glenn? Huh? I, uh, ah! I've got to make Don't report. ever do that! Nothing conclusive. Right. Where's he going? Hmm? Hello, General. General? Private? I'm a quick change artist. What do you think? We don't have time to become discouraged, Eric. We've got to find an answer quickly. Tell Carol? Yeah? She still won't leave. Well, I can't say that I blame her, but she's got to go. We can't take any more. Oh, chance. geez, you're really obsessed, aren't you? Yep. Any change in the new animals? None. Oh, they're dead. Absolutely no change of any kind. I checked their galvanic reflexes on the hour, every hour. Mm -hmm. Results for the sum total of absolutely nothing. Paul, I don't think we've got a chance. Whoa, whoa a little passionate there, Doctor. It's just great. On paper. It just doesn't stand up under practical application. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. You know, this is a great place. Uh, have you had a chance to clean your end of the office yet? You know, Eric, <sighs> who took a bite out of the horse? I don't know. Concentrate the experiments with the guinea pigs and the rabbits in the lab. Since time is so important, we have the advantage of their short life cycle. Mm. Who said that? Animals can't stand <laughs> up to the high frequency stimulation. Stop it. Let's continue the injections with the small animals and confine the high-frequency experiments to bees. And, of course, continue right. with the beatings. Seems logical. Everything seems logical. This late at night. Take a look at our giant. Wedding. Uh, contour sheets. Oh, my leg's caught. Mm. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Glenn, are you up, honey? Well, 130 Rob Roy's, and he's in the other room talking to Earl. Mm-hmm. Um, um. Hello, Carol. Oh, I didn't see you there. Frighten me, Glenn. What'd you expect? Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? Ah, uh, no, Dumbo. I heard you cry out in pain. I was worried about you. Tomorrow may be an important day, Glenn. Mm, Dr. Cole has been experimenting with some animals, a theory of some kind he's been working on. And he said he'll know the results by morning. How tall do you suppose I'll grow? Okay, I'll bite. How tall? Before death releases me from this curse. Well, the company pool says 155 feet. <laughs> Maybe a thousand? Hmm? Million? Mm. Possible. Mm. <laughs> 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 oh, that's you cute. That, Carol? <laughs> Please, Glenn, don't torture yourself. <laughs> but it's fun. I wouldn't actually have to worry too much about breathing until I got about three miles up. The oxygen starts to thin up up there. Dream on. Glenn. You're bumming me I'm out. Lost, Carol. They're not going to find the answer tomorrow or any tomorrow. Hey. You just picked the wrong number. Go on, pick up your chips. Go on home. Take that dip with you, too. think I could leave you alone at a time like this? Mm -hmm. You never did know when to quit, did you? Nope. Well, can you take a hint? I want you to get out and leave me alone. I don't want you around, do you hear? Say yeah, whatever a hint, you wish right. to me, Glenda. Please, please hold on until they try everything possible. There must be a cure for it. There must be. I suppose it's stopped. So what? I stop growing. What then? Can't you imagine what a wonderful life we'd have together? A big yard and a big <laughs> house and a... Up oh. here and you down. You down downtown? Down uh, with it? What down in nasty? Please, is there anything I can do? <laughs> yes, get out! Leave me alone! Oh, um, so I'll just be leaving then. Um, hmm. What's he need a dresser for? What's in there? They look pants. <laughs> no man is a three mile island, Glenn. Yeah. 
You know, that was wonderful, Carol. So, how's the tower heroine coming there? Eric. We can't find him anywhere on the grounds. But you've got to find him. Well, Colonel Halleck, security officer for the area, is out canvassing the desert with his men. Hmm? My fault. I had an argument with him last night. We heard. He won't go far. Pretty miss Paul, I've got the answer. I've got the answer. It's Cocoa Puffs, Bob. I have no idea why, but it fits the equation. Check it out. There's the skim milk, and then there's the Cocoa Puff, and you see? Brilliant. The answer oh. is in the bone marrow. The bone marrow. We were so close we couldn't see it. Yeah. We'll need your bone marrow, Carol. Dr. Lang's work on radiation Carol exposure. Carol Merrill. <laughs> Sulfahydro. Inject sulfahydro compounds into the bone marrow. Exactly. The thing that fooled us was we were looking for some unknown quantity in the plutonium oh. radiation. While all Give the yourself a whack on the side of the head. The same as a hydrogen exposure. The secret was in the degree of the exposure. Well, then injections of the sulfahydro compound should correct the body's regenerative balance. Mm. Or not. Mm. Well, I can see where this would stop his growth, but... You do think you can save him? It may stop his growth, but it won't diminish his size. The stimulation of the hormone secretions in the pituitary or growth-controlling glands will take care of that. Abba-dabba, abba-dabba, You know, it doesn't sound practical, Eric. I, I don't think it'll work. Here, take a look. Let's do it on the 3D BB. See, I made it myself, and I'm proud. That's amazing. Oh, brother. <laughs> That's a Sony. Oh, <laughs> He's invented the TV. They used high-frequency stimulation of the pituitary gland, causing the hormone secretion to reverse the growth process. Well, these things could revolutionize Thanksgiving. First, injections of the sulfahydryl compounds into the bone marrow, that will stop the growing and then stimulate the pituitary gland to reduce his size. I can do that. Oh, like this? No, no, give me that. You be able to inject him with a hypodermic needle this size. I've had an oversized needle constructed. As a matter of fact, doctor... Uh, hey, can I take those home to my I, kids? Uh, I couldn't find Manning any place. My men covered an area of ten square miles. Well, we can't mm. lose them now. We just can't. Just when we have the problem licked. Colonel... Hmm? Can you get us a helicopter? We have two helicopters, but only one pilot. All right. We'll use them to find Manning. Eric, you go with the pilot, and I can fly the other one. Colonel, it's imperative that we find him as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. We think we found the cure, but only if we get to him in time. Time, which is relative, which we also invented today. These things are neat. I'd rather have a puppy, though. Mm -hmm. Well, I can see the controls. Oh, that's not... Oh, there. You see anything? Well, there's a 50-foot guy, but he's got hair. That can't be Glenn. How'd you happen to learn how to fly a helicopter? I can't! Ah! A <laughs> well, pilot joke. Oh, this is Charlie Puffy Clown. Come in. Charlie Dog. Over. Pirate Dog. Uh, we're in a completely different helicopter. Over. Over. Visibility good. No sign of it. Hey, there's uh, something in your ear, Bob. Uh, I was just remarking to the others uh, how different our helicopter is to yours. Over. Uh, good luck with that completely different chopper there. Over. Uh, roger that. Yep, chopper's still different. Over. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> That's a cute one. Calling helicopter William X-ray. Which is different from our helicopter. Charlie Dog, come in. This is William X-ray. Go ahead. We are over Boulder Dam. Oh, at least uh, there's some stock footage of it here. Everything looks normal. We're heading towards Las Vegas. We'll meet you at the Tropicana. It's getting late, so if you don't find them within the hour, you turn back and we'll continue tomorrow. You know, which helicopter is that? Oh, no. The different one. Huh. The distance between our position here and the location where you spotted the dead cat, marked by the pin, is only about 50 it's miles. Metal. Now, he certainly can travel faster than that. He's been gone over 15 hours. He's probably been moving back and forth in an right. aimless pattern. Gadding about the desert in his cute little surround. I don't understand why someone hasn't reported seeing him. Huh. 
How tall would you guess he's grown to mm. by now? Hmm. Fifty. Mm. What's Maybe dream? Fifty-five feet. Do you like Peter Allen? Sooner or later, someone's bound to see him. Maybe take a shot at him. Hmm. Colonel, maybe we're making a mistake in not informing the civil authorities. Be? No, I can't do that. You know the orders. We could use help in tracking him down. I'm not worried about finding him. Oh, as soon as it gets light, I'll show you some action. Say! I just hope he lasts through the night without getting into trouble. Hey, boys. How big do you think that old colossal man's gonna get, huh? Boy, 100 feet, 500 feet. Who knows? Sky's the limit. That's what they say in these kind of situations. Yeah, sure would likes to know. Yeah. What do you think you'd say to him if you finally got to meet the amazing colossal man anyway? Well... <sighs> One thing's for sure, wouldn't use any of those dumb old big guy cliches. Right. <laughs> oh, you mean like, uh, how's the weather up there? Right, or where do you get your pants? Right? Or, uh, any more at home like you? <laughs> or, uh, you going out for varsity basketball right. this fall? Yeah. Can you see my house from here? How many times have you heard that, <laughs> yeah. huh? Yeah. No, not me, not nope, me. Nope, I'm different nope, nope, that nope. way. I think I'd probably ask him some real thoughtful questions. You know, like, what's your sign, or... Do you think B. Arthur's funny? Oh, I'd ask him, how do your chromosomes work when they're the size of step ladders? <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask him if it's true that Cher had some ribs removed. Oh, 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 hey, oh, 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 holy buckets, we hit something. Oh, Joe, you dropped your Barbie. Forget oh. Barbie. Give me rocket number nine pronto. Ow. Damn, I hate that. Wow. Wow. Is that, is that you, Glenn? No, it's Kate Smith. Who else do you know that could take a satellite in the gut? Jeez, sorry. Hey, what are you standing on, big fella? I don't know, some planet. It's supposed to be good for you. Earth, I think. Yeah, Baltimore. Um, uh, uh... Come on, come I, on. I, I, well, geez, I had a whole bunch of things to ask you, but now that you're here, I'm kind of tongue-tied. I'm not. Hey, say, is it true that Cher had some ribs removed? Shut up, Curl. Mm. Say, what have you been doing since the movie, Glenn? Uh, you know, bit parts, Mr. Clean, Green Giant, that kind of thing. Excuse me for a second. You know, I really thought that part in Time Bandits was going to kick it loose for me. I thought that was going to make me. But no. You know I can't even get back in Vegas anymore? Vegas! Blackball. Can't get in. Jeez. Well, you didn't exactly charm the pants off him last time you were in Las Vegas, Glenn. <laughs> mm. You think I'm a freak, don't you? Uh oh. Oh, way to go, Servo. Oh, Sorry. everybody, hold on to something. That's right, I'm a freak. I look like Peter Garrett, I dress like Cebu, for God's sake, and I eat livestock by the handfuls. I bet you just want to run home and tell all your buddies about the half naked circus freak, don't you, Sergeant? That's right, everybody, take a big, steamy gawk at the circus freak. <laughs> Oh, my heart. I've got to go. <sighs> Boy, safe again. I don't Boy, get it. All those aliens, we should be dead ten times over. Wow. Yeah, you know, i got to remind myself to write down some questions next time. Yeah. You know, we're so I'm lucky you didn't kill us. Boy, we never get killed by those aliens. Hmm? If anything comes in, no matter how the phone. if it's about the giant, call me. If I'm asleep, wake me. If I'm walking on air, oh, pinch me. <laughs> Place a call to the Nevada State Police. Ask them to report anything unusual. Uh, missing cattle, broken fences. Big guys. Yeah. What will I give them for a reason, sir? Tell them I'm hot. Think of something. Anything. Yes, sir. Mm. Love you. Bye. Doctor. I love you. Don't ask <sighs> me why, just do. Question. And I'd like a straight answer. Well, yes. Marry me. You consider Manning dangerous. If we can get to him, we can help him. You haven't answered my question. Hmm? Got a point? I truthfully don't know. Well, I want to make something clear to you, Doctor. I've ordered up two more companies of men to help with the search, and I don't intend to risk casualties. Why, you sneaky if, monkey. When they find him, 
he shows any signs of violence, we'll have to stop him. And I mean stop him cold. Ooh. It's not a wild beast you're talking about. He's a human being. But a potentially dangerous one, Miss Forrest. We won't hurt him unless he gives us cause. Like Rodney but King. His mind is sick. Ooh. There's no telling what he'll do or where he'll go. He's out there somewhere. And we'll find him. Or my name is... Uh... so painful being a crappy special effect. Boy, he's really kind of flimsy and shallow there, mm. isn't he? Wait a minute. It's Mr. Ziffel from Green Acres. Mm. Check it out. Oh, I, I bet he does something really funny like throw a bottle away. Not another There's drop the bottle. Out. Not another drop as long as I live. So I, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Woo! All right. That was hard to predict, wasn't it? No. <laughs> Glenn. Sarong, wedding night, leather clown suit. No, not the circus tent. No, Glenn. Huh? 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 Hmm? Either those curtains go or I do. I think you'll ask for a while. It's such a lovely moonlit. Oh, Glenn. Hmm. It's time for my only song. Glenn, my giant one. Glenn, is that you? We've got your mail. My loving Glenn. He should have been confined. A fence or something. Maybe chains. We had no business letting him run loose like we did. We were in all. We should have been attempting to there, Eric, and black and white. Well, excuse me. I'm sure we still to recognize the warning. I heard tuna fish. Any word yet? No, another thing. If only we can find him before... <laughs> Why did I have to argue with him? Now another one to take the blame. I'm going to bed before it's my turn. <sighs> We're taking off quite early in the morning. Is the needle and medication all set? Since he left, but I'll double check. Do you want the rest of this sandwich? Can I have it? Hmm. Carol, a few days ago I suggested that you leave. Now I'm going to insist that you leave. It's no longer safe for you. Glenn Manning is a sick man, in mind as well as body. Dr. Lindstrom, I'm not leaving. Hmm. I've already wired Washington for permission to lift security restrictions. He's got it wired. Now, the restrictions will probably be unnecessary by morning anyway. Someone's bound to see him. You had no right to do a thing like that. Don't you have any heart? Nope. You're an intelligent girl, Carol. Can't you see the futility of the situation? There's nothing more that you can do to help him. Besides, if and when we do find him, it's very likely he won't even recognize you. Hmm. Then you don't believe that you can save him. Nope. Possibly. If we can get to him in time. Well, I'm not leaving until I know. Ah, uh, don't use the bathroom. I kind of cut a hole in the arrow zone. We've had two more reports of slaughtered cattle. Was there anything else? Guess who? He well, they couple. scared Mr. Ziffel and bit the head off Ebb. Oh, and Manning is about ten times the height and width of a normal man. So I charge you, Tailors of America, dress this man. Dr. Lindstrom and Dr. Colder can estimate, Glenn Manning should weigh about 18,000 pounds. If he's been eating right. Cows. I don't anticipate any trouble whatsoever in finding our giant. In fact, we possibly could have found him last night. But it was now, the wrong guy. Reported seeing him. But since we don't know exactly what <clears throat> mental change may have taken place during Manning's continued growth, I thought it best to wait until daylight. Can we have class outside today? Therefore, our greatest problem is not in finding him, but what to do with him after he's found. Put that pipe Dr. out, Lindstrom, Rockwell. Well, naturally, we're not certain that it'll work. But the success or failure of the treatment may very well depend on how soon we're able to administer it. Under Colonel Halleck's command, you men will be in charge of the surgery. Now, as soon as he's found, Dr. Colder and I will fly to him in a helicopter and take over from there. Colonel. Boy, I really bit it up there, didn't I? Mm. Tough crowd. Oh, boy. As you know, this is our position here. Slaughtered cattle have been found here, 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 and here. The two motorists reported seeing him at this point here on Highway 93. And from the way he's been zigzagging back and forth, we can assume that Manning is somewhere here in the southern tip of Nevada. Drunk. And we're going to cover every inch of it until we find him. 
It's with a little guy named Sprout. Of operation. Six observation planes were sent up from the Victorville Air Base and are now searching from the air. They will be in radio contact with me at all times. Cool. Captain Hamilton, you will divide your company into units of 25 men. And starting from our position here, you will fan them out in an arc of 180 degrees and head east. Captain Fraser, you will also divide your company into units of 25 men. Trucks will take them to the place where Highway 91 crosses the border of Nevada and Arizona. Next to the stock. You will then fan them out in an arc of 180 degrees and head westward. I will accompany one of your units. units? Are there any questions? Uh, is this going to be on the final? What do we do when we spot him? Run! Run! For the radio. Now, when you see him, report to me immediately. I will relay the information to the helicopter of Dr. Lindstrom and Major Coulter, and they will rush to the spot to medically treat him. And now a word of warning. He's you big. You are not to advance any closer to the giant than 50 feet. Your men will be well armed, but you are not to fire, except in the case of self-defense. Remember, He's stay big. away from him. The giant is potentially dangerous. Have right, Jack people. and the Beanstalk read for tomorrow, people. You know, I think this is the oldest battalion I've ever seen. Yeah. The arthritis squad. Lindy, headed for Paris. Dust is deployed. The Army's best stock footage is called to duty. Hey. Hey, it looks like they must be visiting Keith Richards. <laughs> oh, I jabbed it in my foot. Oh. Is that your large hypodermic needle necessary? I think so. Remember, he's over 60 feet tall. Otherwise, oh, that's right. Have to make more than one shot. That's right, I forgot. Hey. Ah, there he is. And so oh. Congress has decided to increase the annual advertising budget here in Las Vegas. He's in the principal's office. Well, it looks like the FSOOE. Let's stand for Sui? flying saucer observers of Earth. Oh. Have a competitor in the seeing strange things department. And this time it's right here in Nevada. Now it seems that two motorists driving south on Highway 93 barely missed a collision with now get this. Got it. A Sixty foot giant. <laughs> what have you got to top that one? <laughs> Here's Barry Zvan. Hello. <laughs> Calling ground unit three. This is observation plane King Nancy. Over. Observation plane King Nancy. This is ground unit three. Go We're on. all coy and frilly. Over. King Nancy? He's just outside of Las Vegas and is moving toward the resort hotel section. And, Over. oh my God, he's got a big bag of loose change. I think he intends to use it. Ground unit three. Ground unit three. This is helicopter William X-ray. I heard the report. Ceiling fan arrived. okay. We're changing our course. Should arrive in Las Vegas in about 14 minutes. Off and clear. Off and clear? There he is. We see him. He's camping it up. No, no, there he is. Oh. Hey, out of my way, Habib. Say, how to get your pants to fit. Hmm. Hey, come on. Hey, I'm just talking to my friend over here, all right? Nice jammies. Cute. Ladies. Well, uh, I think I'll go catch Siegfried and Roy. See you later, Habib. Oh, wow. Uh, well, I wouldn't kick her out of my tent for eating cows. Mr. Spot. <laughs> Let me help you. Say, quick change. Nope, that didn't make me happy. Still empty inside. Oh, no, he's going to pee. Quick, over to the Tropicana. Oh, go. All right, all right. Show's over, people. Nothing to see here. Move it along, folks. Let's go now. You too. Move it along, big fella. And what seemed like a joke or a prank but a few hours ago has now you can become a, now, buddy. a reality in a king-size package over 60 feet tall. Ooh, say. Police Chief Benson has asked me to tell you to stay in your home. Stay in your home. Okay. The Army is rushing two doctors to Las Vegas by way of helicopter. And that's plenty. They apparently know what to do with the giant. What I'd like to know is, where did he come from? 
I gotta go! Well, there's one thing we didn't give much thought to. Huh? What's that? Just how much of a job it's gonna be to give him this shot. Think he's gonna stand there and let us do it? Did you get that giant lollipop? I think I saw him in a Japanese dance troupe. I am the king. Give me my crown. I'm going to have an imperial party. <laughs> I know this is the king and I. Oh, it's an imperial margarine commercial. Butter. Parquet. Butter. Parquet. Listen, I may be big, but I still know what's tacky. I renounce the throne. You know what the orders are. The army's not to shoot and let messages. We're gonna let that monster run around. Uh, he's just browsing. Here comes the giant! Hey, and he's capping it up to beat the band! You know, I've always wanted to do this. I was just too small to punch anybody who laughed. Check this out. <laughs> there was an old woman who lived in a shoe? I don't think so. Come to Papa. Well, we've got this in tan with a strap. Anyone see my contacts? Are you going to stand by and let him destroy property? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, I was going to wear this shoe. What was I thinking? I'm really sick. Well, there's Circus Circus. It's attracted quite a little following there. It's a giant vase. Oh, no. Where's the Chamber of Commerce? I'm new in town. Boy, this is a gaudy looking place. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Now, how do these people keep up with him? He's got a bigger stride. Ooh! That hurts. Have some celery. Don't forget to eat your Ooh. greens. <laughs> Give you the back of my palm. Give you the back of my palm. <laughs> Danny Thomas! Oh, no! He hates Danny Thomas. EO-11, my foot. Ha! Brought the house down. <laughs> True. We'll try to pick up some of the action and excitement through our window. You stay here. Huh? Well, we used to do that. Most people use cameras. From the petty cartel on the street, he must be... Wait a minute! Hey! He's beautiful! Excuse me, uh, could I get the time? Don't you dare touch the cowboy! Huh? Yeah, come here, cop along, you crummy rat in the Whoa. He hated the village people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh shoot, I forgot the giant cotton balls. He's leaving the city heading toward Boulder Dam. Hi. Hey look, you'll be the biggest guy by a dam site. <laughs> Careful, that kind of talk will get your arm ripped off. Ooh, better remember that. We are nearing the Arizona side of Boulder Dam. We'll cut him off when he tries to cross. Over. He's just ahead of us, Colonel. Over. We'll try to stop him before he reaches the dam. Over. Right. Over and out. Over. Oh, he's so fair-skinned, he shouldn't be out in the sun so long. Ah. Ah. So we've got to get close enough to make a positive ID. Ah. Does this bug you? Does this bug you? I'm not touching you. Glenn? Is that you, Glenn? It's a need. Yeah, nothing compares to you. See? I feel like I'm in there. Get the needle ready. We're sitting down here. Glenn, I need you to drop your sarong and turn around. It's Peter Garrett from Midnight Oil. Oh, the power and the passion. There's toe there, Crow. <laughs> Oh, oh. 
Hope they're gonna give him a pedicure. Yeah. Are you allergic to any medications? Do you recognize it? We know you're up there. Come out, or oh. <laughs> we want to help you to get well. Hmm? Do you understand? No. I'm Dr. Lindstrom. That's Major Clark. And this is Carol. Your fiance. Remember Carol, the one with the Hong Kong guy? The first step into recovery is recognizing you have a problem. Drive it in hard. We have to penetrate the bone in the first injection. I don't think we get a second chance. You ready? One. It's like the Stooges. Two. Three. Get the point, Glenn. Hmm. Of course he is. Number two. That's big for him. Ooh, and this is why lawn darts were taken off the market, people. When I play the king and I, it's the King Kong and I. As far as I'm concerned, the wedding is still on. Come along, honey. You know, I always wanted to see Hoover Dam. He walks kind of funny. Yeah. Like Red Fox. <laughs> to one, to two, um, three, three. Oh, damn. Damn. Three. <laughs> He's delightful. He's the lemon. He's the sugar free. Damn. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's really good. Please put me down. Okay, right. okay. She loves me. Oh. She loves me now. Oh, yeah. She loves me. She loves me not. Thanks for putting down the girl. Here's some bullets for you. Oh, nice cannonball, but he didn't tuck in time. What do you give him on that, Crow? Uh, I give him a 3.5. Uh -huh. Bummer. Boy, did you see his skull on the pavement? It looked like a smashed pumpkin. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry, sorry. He's uh, sorry. Honey, let's go get sorry. a souvenir and get home. Well, I guess this must be it. Or, or is, is it? it? Let's go. Ooh. One humdinger of a doozy of a loser it was. Yeah. Oh. It's like if I was that immense, I'd at least have a little more fun with it. Uh, like, why couldn't the giant have picked up a city bus and used it like a harmonica or something? Right. Yeah, you know, you can grow to be 50 feet tall and still retain your sense of humor. Right. Others have. You know, personally, I would like to have seen him do more with the Vegas Strip. Well, I'm just blue skying right now, but wouldn't it have been nifty if you would have just put on that big shoe from the Silver ah. Slipper, done a little Elton John impression, maybe used the Landmark Hotel as a maraca? I don't know. Jim Hmm? I would have taken my head and made a hat. Uh huh. Ah, yeah. Uh, so, a hat. Well, yeah. Um, well, he could have become really good friends with Claus Oldenburg or something like that. Uh, or he could have used the St. Louis Arch as sort of a makeshift chin up bar. Or used the 50 foot woman as a girlfriend. How about using the Mitchell Corn Palace as a munchy, crunchy treat? Or use an Alice Chalmer thrashing machine as an epilate. Or he could fashion the Houston Astrodome into a chapeau and stage a hat party with his being the grandest of all. <laughs> uh, I think we're getting a little too silly. Oh, oh I know. He could uh, use the Transamerica building as a good place to fill his insurance needs. Oh, what a little kiss up. Am not. R2. Okay. Yeah. You guys, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. We got some letters here to read, okay? This first one's real neat. It says, 
Mystery Science Theater 3000. Let's put this up on the still store there, Camba. Okay, this says Mystery Science Theater 3000 is the greatest show ever. Oh, that's an excellent start. Yep. I am a devoted fan and I watch you every weekend. My only problem is that as each show nears its close, I feel the tears began to well in my eyes. Couldn't you maybe make the show longer? I think we could do that, guys. Sure. You want to try it? Okay. <clears throat> there. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah. Pretty neat. And the really cool drawing. Put that. You see that? Isn't that neat, you guys? Hey! Wow. We look like we're in a Curious George book. Cool. Uh -huh. oh, shall we put the, the address up on the screen, Joel? Yep. Please do that. Send That'd be great. Send your letters to the Mystery Science Theater 3000 Information Club, Post Office Box 30. 5325 Hopkins, Minnesota, 55343. Yeah. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Give it a shot. What do you think, sirs? Look, if I want my opinion, I'll beat it out of me. I'll push the button, Frank. I've got a tennis game later with the Chirping Hill Beast. You know, I think if I were the Amazing Colossal Man, I'd throw a pyramid party with mine being the... Don't even think about it, Frank. No! No! No!